Do all of you know that today is a very auspicious day? Uh, Pushimo. Why is today an auspicious day? Why is today an auspicious day? Vaman Dev's birthday? But that's not the only reason. There's another reason also. Yes, it's also Jiva Goswami's appearance day. So today we are going to have a double class. Actually a triple class. We're going to discuss Lord Vaman Dev. We're going to discuss Jiva Goswami. And we're going to discuss the Prabhupada Marathon. Okay? Making all the plans for the Prabhupada Marathon. And today is a very auspicious day to make it. Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So as today is the Appearance Day of Lord Vamana Dev. We are going to discuss a verse from the Bhagavatam that describes his appearance on the planet. I do not think there is any religious movement in this world that has as many festivals as we have. Almost every few days is a big feast. A lot of work for the cooks and a lot of work for the devotees too. They get so much to eat. <laughs> Recently we celebrated Janamasmi, then Prabhupada's appearance today, then Srimati, then Lord Balaram's birthday before that, then Radharani's birthday, today is Lord Vamandev's appearance day, tomorrow is another appearance day, Thakur Bhakti Vinod. You know. <laughs> so sometimes in India, some people think that Vaishnavas belong to what is called the kitchen religion. They say you Vaishnavas have too many festivals, too much feasting. So that's a fact, but we only feast on Krishna Prashant. So we're going to discuss a verse from the 8th canto, chapter 18, text 1, that describes the appearance of Lord Vamandev on this planet. And then we shall briefly present the story of Lord Vamandev and Bali Maharaj. Of course, the story is very detailed, but since we have limited time, we'll just present a summary presentation. Itham virincha sutta karma virya Pradur babu vamrata bhura dityam Chathur bujaha shanka gadabja chakra Pishanga vasa nalina yatikshanaha Itham virincha sutta karma virya Pradur Babu Vamrata Bhura Dityam Chatur Bhuja Shanka Gadhabja Chakra Pashanga Vasa Nelina Yatekshanaha. So, as we said earlier, Shukadev Goswami in this verse is describing the appearance of Lord Vamanadev. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Yida Yidahi Dharmasa Gilani Bhavati Bharata Abhutan Madharsma Syatadad Manam Shijami Yaha. I appear from time to time in different parts of the world. And the Lord always appears with one goal in mind. Paritanaya sadhu naam vinachyacha duskatam dharma sanstha panarthaya samavami yogi yogi to establish dharma. And when the Lord appears, He doesn't appear like you and I have appeared, but He appears in His divine transcendental personality. Just like in this verse, you read the appearance of Lord Vamanadev from the womb of Aditya. He appeared with four hands which were decorated with conch club, lotus and disc. And he was dressed in yellow garments and his eyes appeared like the, like the blooming uh, petals of a lotus flower. Krishna says in the fourth chapter of the Gita, which Prabhupada has quoted in the purport, Janma karma chame divya me vamabhiti tatvataha tyakta deham panar janma nahitima miti sarajana my coming and going from this world is both divyam, transcendental. The Lord's body in the form of Vamana Dev was blackish in complexion. The mark of Sri Vastava was on his chest. So, there are many verses that are describing the transcendental nature of the Lord's appearance. Now, the Lord appeared as the son of Aditi and the great sage Kashyapa. The Lord very soon transformed himself to be an ordinary dwarf, an ordinary beggar, brahmach- brahmachari. He had appeared in his original spiritual form with ornaments and weapons in his hands, but very soon he assumed, in the presence of his father and mother, the form of a uh, vamana, a brahman, brahmana dwarf, a brahmachari, just like a theater actor. You may have seen a theater actor is playing one role, then he just changes his dress and takes on another role. So similarly, the Lord appeared in his transcendental form, but then he changed himself to appear like a young Brahmin, a Brahmana beggar. 
as lord as uh, the brahma samhita says advaita machutam anadi ananta rupa it says the lord is ananta rupa andaranta ananta rupa means he manifests himself in unlimited transcendental forms so all the various incarnations of the lord are described in the revealed scriptures therefore through the scriptures we accept what are genuine incarnations and what are concocted but whenever the lord appears he performs an unusual activity which cannot be equaled by any other materialistic individual so at the time the lord appeared bali maharaj was performing an aswadema sacrifice this was being for performed under the patronage of brahmanas belonging to the bhrigu dynasty bali maharaj was a very exalted devotee of the lord as we will see but the lord wanted to show him special mercy the lord told yudhishthira maharaj that i show special mercy upon my devotee by taking away all his material possession because when the lord sees the here is a sincere individual his only weakness is a little bit of attachment to some material possession then the lord removes that material possession so that the devotee may become completely dependent upon the lord so the brahmanas are performing the big aswadmeda sacrifice and vamana they walked into that sacrificial arena and as soon as they all saw him they saw his special personality they felt that his body had more effulgence than even the sun and the moon and they could understand that here was a special personality who had come so bali maharaj was very happy that a very great personality like uh, uh, lord vamana dev had appeared on the sacrificial arena because he was performing this aswamedha sacrifice so bali maharaj worshiped lord vamana dev by washing his lotus feet and after receiving him in a vaishnava way bali maharaj said please tell us what we can do for you this is natural when a saintly personality comes to your house or he comes to your uh, you know your sacrificial arena the host offers him any facility that he may desire so vamana dev said just give me enough land where i can keep three footsteps bali maharaj when he heard this he said that's all you don't want something more you're not very intelligent you're a small child ask me for something more this is nothing for me now land to keep three footsteps but lord vamanadev said he spoke very nicely lord vamanadev said a man who doesn't control his senses even if he gets the whole world he will not be satisfied and a man who controls his senses he can be satisfied with even something very little we see this happening in the material world a devotee is satisfied with a little bit of prasadam some basic possessions and the holy name and the gross materialist he has so much money so many assets still he is always complaining dissatisfied we have the opportunity of meeting these so called rich people both in india and in the western countries and our observation is regardless of how much wealth they have they always appear dissatisfied and wanting to grab more and more more so vama dev told the lord told bali vama dev told bali maharaj no thank you very much for offering me more offering me whatever i may desire but just give me enough land where i can keep three footsteps because if i have one who has controlled his senses he is satisfied with whatever is provided by the will of the lord lord vamandev said if a learned brahmana takes more than what he needs for his basic necessities then he becomes entangled and he has to suffer sinful reaction There's a nice story of Lord Ramachandra. When Lord Ramachandra was on the planet, he called all the brahmanas and offered them unlimited land. He said, "Take as much as you want." But the brahmana said, "No, we just want as much as we need for our survival and not more." So, a brahmachari, a brahmana, a sanyasi, he can beg alms from others, but he should not beg more than necessary. If he begs more than necessary, then he becomes entangled. So, even though Bali Maharaj was offering Lord Vamana Dev unlimited land but vaman dev said no 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 i don't want so ultimately vaman dev convinced bali maharaj that he only needs enough land to keep three footsteps and he would be satisfied actually bali maharaj said i'm so impressed by your sweet words but you're not intelligent at all you're asking me for so little bali maharaj's spiritual master's name was shukra so see appear in his nayat shukra chari so the word shukra shukra is a sanskrit word which means semen so shukracharya was not actually a spiritual master but he was a priest a family priest he was a family priest on the basis of birth so shukracharya knew that this beggar is not a beggar 
It is God Himself. So Shukracharya told Bali Maharaj, his disciple, "What have you done? You have committed all your wealth to this beggar, Bhamana Dev, who is going to take away everything you possess." So Shukracharya was trying to induce Bali Maharaj. to break the promise that he had given to vamana dev but bali maharaj said i cannot do that i cannot break my promise i cannot break my promise bali maharaj said the the earth mother earth it can tolerate the burden of mountains rivers forests trees but it cannot tolerate the burden of liars you see the earth on the earth the earth is carrying mountains rivers oceans and big big mountains but the earth cannot carry the burden of a liar this was the verdict of bali maharaj Now, as we said earlier, Shukra Charya. Shukra means semen. So, Bali Shukra Charya was a spiritual master or a family priest, not on the basis of qualification, but on the basis of birth. So, Shukra Charya was worried. He was worried that if his dear disciple Bali Maharaj will give up all his wealth, then there'll be nothing left for him. And therefore, Shukra Charya was trying to induce Bali Maharaj that he should break the promise that he has given to the beggar Vamana Dev. So there are two categories of spiritual masters: one on the basis of birth, one on the basis of qualification or guna. The spiritual master on the basis of birth is only interested in his pocket money, but the spiritual master on the basis of qualification is is interested in helping develop love of God in his disciple. Actually, Bali Maharaj was more advanced than Shukracharya. How Bali Maharaj had developed love of God, and he had developed complete detachment to all his possessions. One who has developed love of God. doesn't retain attachment to anything material his attachment is only to the supreme personality of god head and his meditation is only how can i develop love of god so bali maharaj bali maharaj was warned by shukracharya that this beggar has come to take away all your wealth but still bali maharaj did not hesitate or fear when he did not hesitate about giving up all his possession so bali maharaj refused to budge to shukracharya's instructions so you may say bali maharaj here is re- is rejecting the advice of his spiritual master he is a third offense this is being the instruction of the spiritual master but actually he was not he was disobeying the instruction of the spiritual master because the spiritual master was instructing him to not develop love of god was preventing him from surrendering to god and because the spiritual master was instructing him to not surrender to uh, the lord bali maharaj rejected his advice just like we see in the bhagavatam the lord brahma had instructed the kumaras to get married to expand the population but the kumaras were not interested in engaging in sex life so they refused to get married and take part in this activity of helping expand the procreation so with the first footstep vamana dev covered this whole worldly planet He expanded, and with his first step, he covered the whole planet. And with his second footstep, Bhamdev covered everything, right from this earth till the sky. So here is God. Yesterday, someone asked me a question last night. Someone said that she met somebody who said he's an incarnation of Krishna. So, but when Krishna appears, he doesn't perform ordinary activities. He performs superhuman activities. So, in the form of Lord Vamanadev, he stretched his leg. and the leg went right from the earth to the sky in the material world you have the olympic games and in the olympic games you have several people who have big records of long jump but you've never had somebody who can jump so high so vamana dev with his second foot he covered everything right to the sky and then vamana dev asked bali maharaj where should i keep my third foot bali maharaj could say yes what shukracharya had told him was right Now he, he, this woman, there was not a beggar, but here he is, God Himself. He said, "Keep the third foot on my head." So, woman, a day, the Lord incarnated and showed very special mercy to His beloved devotee Bali Maharaj. In the first two footsteps, Lord Woman, a day, took away the possessions of Bali Maharaj. But in the third footstep, He took away what? He even made Bali Maharaj surrender to Him. So, on this auspicious day of Lord Woman, there was birthday. we should meditate on the wonderful past times of the lord we should meditate on this wonderful past time of lord vamana dev we should meditate how the lord is capable of performing inconceivable activities and how the lord appears in his transcendental form and performs activities which can never be equal by anybody else so many people these days want to imitate god but to imitate god is not easy you have to perform superhuman activities 
and these were performed and the superhuman activities were revealed by they are revealed by the lord whenever he incarnates so today is a very auspicious day and we should meditate on these wonderful past times of lord vamana dev hari krishna so if you don't mind i'll just come back in one minute and continue with the discussion on jiva goswami and samkirtan goswami is a brindavan sanatan goswami rupa goswami raghunath das goswami raghunath bhata goswami gopal bhata goswami and jiva goswami so jiva goswami was the nephew of sanatan and rupa jiva goswami was actually the most learned of the six goswamis of brindavan he compiled over 400000 verses so jiva goswami actually his father died when he was young and jiva goswami he wanted to go to look at nabadweep the birthplace of chaitanya mahaprabhu but his mother would not let him go because his mother was very worried that he may get attracted to the path of bhakti so jiva goswami told his mother that he was going to visit a relative but he took the boat and he ended up in nabadweep and there he met lord nitananda and then he visited all the places where lord chaitanya had performed his innumerable transcendental pastime jiva goswami was trained in sanskrit in banaras by a devotee called madhu sudhan and he was a very very prominent sanskrit scholar it is said actually that jiva goswami's preaching his philosophical knowledge was so vast that even the muslim king akbar came to bindavan to take guidance from him because jiva goswami was the youngest of the goswamis you don't read much about him in the chaitanya charitamrita but you do read about jiva goswami in scriptures that were compiled later on like in the chaitanya bhagavat the goswamis of brindavan were all very learned in spiritual philosophy they were expert in all the languages they had all the wealth at their command but they renounced everything and they inspired the kingly class to build very opulent temples of the lord actually a lot of the temples in vrindavan had been destroyed most of the temples in vrindavan had been destroyed by the mahamdan rulers who had invaded northern india so chaitanya mahaprabhu sent the goswami to vrindavan to reestablish places of worship so the goswamis gave us the perfect example of how to do devotional service they themselves would live underneath a different tree every day but for the lord they build the most upland temples so we are not suggesting that all of you start living underneath different trees you may all end up in the hospital <laughs> but the mood of the goswamis must be cultivated that is nothing for ourselves and everything for the lord so jiva goswami as we said was the youngest of the goswamis and he was a very very prominent sanskrit scholar at the time jiva goswami was on the planet there was a very prominent sanskrit scholar called rupa narayan saraswati rupa and sanatan as we had explained earlier were also very prominent scholars but they had retired to vrindavan to live the life of mendicants and to write books on devotional service in one lecture in los angeles prabhupad said that the goswamis left behind so much literature that you would need a truck load you would need a whole truck to carry that literature chaitanya mahaprabhu left behind only eight verses known as the six shastaka the goswami of vrindavan took the theme of the eight verses of the shastaka and they elaborated it into hundreds of books so you can see how learned they were so jiva goswami um he was actually initiated by rupa goswami he had actually approached sanatan goswami for initiation but sanatan goswami referred him to rupa goswami and before rupa goswami gave him initiation he severely tested him he gave him a lot of difficult assignments to do he would send him out begging he would massage his legs and only after he was fully convinced about jiva goswami's spiritual integrity did he initiate him so jiva goswami's fame was very very widespread so there was one very prominent sanskrit scholar as we said whose name was rupa narayan saraswati this uh, rupa narayan saraswati he had virtually defeated all the sanskrit scholars in india 500 years ago so he approached rupa and sanatan and said i heard you two are very prominent scholars i want to have a philosophical debate with you rupa and sanatan had sacrificed everything in the world and they were not interested in a title and known as sanskrit scholar so rupa and sanatan refused to get into a debate with the sanskrit scholar so the sanskrit scholars he was very proud he had a very strong false ego he said you don't want to def- argue with me because you're scared i'm going to defeat you 
So Vaishnava by nature is also humble. So Rupa Goswami and Sanadana, yes, yes, yes. You are more intelligent than us. So that Rupa Nand Saraswati said, Okay, give me a letter, peaceful, saying that I've defeated you in a debate. So Rupa and Sanatan gave him a letter saying that Rupa Nand Saraswati has defeated us in a Sanskrit debate. So Rupa Nand Saraswati started telling everyone, See, I've defeated even Rupa and Sanatan. Jiva Goswami knew that this was not possible. In front of an assembly of many people, there was a big debate for 40 days in Vrindavan between Jiva Goswami and Rupanaran Saraswati. Because Rupanaran Saraswati said, I've defeated your uncles, I've defeated everyone. Only person I've now defeated is you. So let me have a debate. So in that debate which took place, Jiva Goswami completely smashed Rupanaran Saraswati's Sanskrit knowledge. And Rupanand Saraswati ran away from there feeling very embarrassed. And he never returned to Vrindavan. So Jiva Goswami was very happy that he has defeated this man who was boasting that he has defeated his spiritual master and uncle. So Jiva Goswami went to his uncle and his spiritual master Rupa Goswami and said, and he told him what he had done. So when they heard, when Rupa Goswami heard what Jiva Goswami had done, instead of becoming happy, he became angry. Why did he become angry? Because Jiva Goswami and the Goswamis, they had renounced everything and they were not interested in some mundane achievement of having defeated a mundane scholar. A devotee is not interested in just meeting a big man just for the sake of meeting if there's no preaching value. I remember in 1968... Devotees were trying to arrange an appointment of Srila Prabhupada to see the Pope in Rome. But Prabhupada was not interested. He said, I'll only meet him if we agree to discuss religion on the basis of the four religious principles that we follow. Otherwise, he was not interested. So, Rupa Goswami and Sanatan were very upset when they heard that, uh, sorry, Rupa Goswami was very upset when he heard that Jiva Goswami was happy because he had defeated this big scholar, Rupa Narayan Saraswati. So, uh, Rupa Goswami, he punished Jiva, chastised him. And he was so severely chastised that Jiva Goswami had to leave Vrindavan. And he left Vrindavan and he had to go and live in Mathura. And for one year, he would eat only very little. He wouldn't even talk to anybody. And he lived in the bark of a tree. And then (laughs) one day, Sanatan Goswami was talking to Rupa and Sanatan said, Jiva Daya. Jiva Daya means be merciful on the living entity. Jiva means the living entity. And Rupa Goswami could understand that his brother Sanatan was telling him, please be merciful on Jiva Goswami. So then Rupa Goswami called Jiva Goswami back. So on this auspicious day, which is the appearance day of Lord Vamanadev and the appearance day of Lord of Shri, Shri Jiva Goswami, we devotees should pray to Lord Vamanadev and Jiva Goswami for their blessings so that we can make spiritual advancement. I want to read to you devotees the 25 books that were compiled by Jiva Goswami. Hari Nama Mrita Vyakarana Sutra Malika Dhatu Sangraha Krishna Chapa Deepika Gopala Virudavali Rasamrita Sesha Sri Madhva Mahotsav Sri Shankalpa Kalpa Briksha Bhavartha Sucha Champu. The tenth book is Ch- Gopal Tapani Tika. Eleventh is Brahma Sangeeta Tika. Bhakti Rasamrita Sesha. Uh, Lochana Rochinani. Yoga Sastra Tika. Gayatri Bhashya. Agni Purana. Padmi Purana. Gopala Champu. Then he wrote these Sandharpas and there are seven Sandharpas. So these are just, uh, I just wanted to give you all a little idea. I know that you don't know the content of these Sandharpas, but I just wanted to give you a little idea of the vast amount of literature that was composed by Jiva Goswami. So the Goswamis were engaged in compiling transcendental literature. In other words, what the Goswamis did, they took the essence of the Vedic scriptures and presented it in an easy, sublime manner so that humanity in future could benefit. Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare.